of the Zone Guards. On the Royal Guards with the waves of white in a helmet, hot and a tunic tight, and a great big boots with a fiber storm, but we're not great boots and his uniform, a well drilled trip and then his guards, and we are the Escort First Life Guards. The First Life Guards, the First Life Guards. And we are the Escort First Life Guards. Criticize too severely such shortcomings as you may detect in our semi barbarous society. Sir, I have eyes for nothing but the blameless and the beautiful. Oh, we thank you. He's really very polite. Uh, Lady Sophie, do not leave us. Sir, your children are young and so far innocent. If they are to remain so, then it is necessary that they be removed at once from their current disgraceful surroundings. Dear, dear, they really shouldn't. Uh, uh, Captain Fitzbattleax, sir, your troopers appear to be receiving a troublesome amount of attention from those young ladies. I know how strict you English soldiers are, and I should be extremely distressed if anything occurred to shock their puritanical British sensitiveness. No, oh, I don't think there's any chance of that. You think not? They won't be offended. No, not at all. They're quite hardened to it. They get a great deal of this sort of thing standing sentry at the horse guards. It's English, is it? It's particularly English. Oh, well then, of course, it's all right. Ladies, carry on. It's particularly English. Yes! Come, my daughter, for we have much to say to each other. Farewell, Captain Fitzpatrick. I cannot thank you too emphatically for the devoted care with which you have looked after me during our long and eventful voyage. A gallant soldier, brave and true, intended field and tourney, I grieve to have occasioned you so very long a journey. When soldiers seek you, taking place in charge of youth and beauty, then pleasure merely masquerades as regimental duty. <laughs>
beautiful. Can you wonder that I love her so passionately? No. She is extraordinarily, miraculously lovely. Good heavens, what a singularly beautiful girl. I knew you'd say so. What exquisite charm of manner. What surprising delicacy of gesture. Why, she's a goddess. A very goddess. Well, she's an attractive girl. <laughs> attractive? You must be blind. Why, she's entrancing, enthralling, intoxicating. Oh, God bless my heart, what is the matter with me? Yes, so you, you promised to help me get her father's consent, you know. Promise? Oh, yes, but... The convulsion has come, my dear boy. It is she, my ideal. Oh, oh, help me, Francis. What's the matter? I'm going mad, mad, mad with love of her. Have you composed yourself? The girl is perfectly opaque. Mm -hmm. Besides, remember, each of us is helpless without the other. You can't succeed without my consent, you know. You dare to threaten? Oh, ungrateful! When you came to me, palsied with love for this girl, and implored my assistance, did I not unhesitatingly promise it? And this is the return I get! Oh, out of my way, ingrate! Oh, whatever is the matter with me? Dear me, I'm afraid we're interrupting a tete-a-tete. -tete. Oh, oh, no, you come most appropriately. I will be brief. I, we, love you, this man and I, madly, passionately, but we don't know how to settle which of us is to marry you. I am paralyzed by the extraordinary radiance of your loveliness. Oh dear, I am being incoherent. I was never like this before, and it will not occur again. I shall be fluent. <laughs> Presently. Zora, this is extremely awkward. Oh dear. Captain Fitzbattle, what is to be done? Leave it to me. I'll manage it. It's a common situation. Mm -hmm. Why not settle it in the English fashion? Oh, the, the English, English fashion! What's that? I haven't the slightest idea. It's quite simple. In England, when two gentlemen are in love with the same lady, and until it is established which gentleman is to um, blow the brains out of the other, it is allowed under the... Uh, Rival Admirers Clauses Consolidations Act. That the lady be entrusted to an officer of household cavalry as stakeholder, who will, uh, who is bound to hand her over to the survivor on the Tom Time principle in a good condition of substantial and decorative repair. Oh, fair wear and tear and damage by fire and flood excluded. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it sounds reasonable. What do you say? Shall we entrust her to this officer of household cavalry? It won't give us time. Oh, I don't know. I, I am not in a position to think it out coolly. But, well, if he is an officer of the household cavalry, and if the princess consents... Alas, dear sirs, I have no alternative under the rival admirers' clauses consolidation act. Good. Then that's settled. It's understood, I think, all round, that by the English custom bound, I'll hold the lady safe and sound in trust of mine arrival. Until you clearly testify, by sword or pistol, by and by, which gentleman prefers to die, and which prefers survival. We stand, I think, not and which prefers survival 
If I should die and he should live to you without reserve, and give her heart so young and sensitive, and all her predilections. If he should live and I should die, I see no kind of reason why you should not, if you wish it, try to gain a young affection. If I should die, I should Until quite plain is their intent, these sages twain I represent. So please infer that nothing long, your henceforth, as it were, engaged to marry balls. So take it that I represent the two on that hypothesis. What would you? My sister's governess. Lady Sophie's an angel, but I do sometimes wish she'd mind her own business. It's... <laughs> it's particularly humorous. I see nothing humorous in it at all. I only see that you, the despotic king of this country, are made the subject of the most scandalous insinuations. Why do you permit these things? Well, it, it appeals to my sense of humor. After all, it's the only really comic paper in Utopia. I wouldn't be without it for the world. If it had any literary merit, I could understand it. It's mere ungrammatical twaddle. Oh, it's not ungrammatical. <laughs> Unpleasantly personal, perhaps, but written with an epigrammatical point, which is very rare. Very rare indeed. 
I see a notice of a new piece called King Tuppence, in which an English tenor has the audacity to personate you on a public stage. My dear father, if you were a free agent, you would never permit these outrages. Zara, I admit, I am not altogether a free agent, and nominally a despot. I am, between ourselves, the helpless tool of two unscrupulous wise men who insist on my falling in with all their plans and threaten to denounce me for immediate explosion if I remonstrate. <laughs> oh, my poor father! Now, listen. With a view to remodeling the social and political institutions of Utopia, I have brought with me six representatives of the principal causes that make England the powerful, happy, and blameless country that the European civilization has declared it to be. Place yourself unreservedly in the hands of these gentlemen, and they will help you reorganize your country on a footing that will allow you to defy your persecutors. They are all now washing their hands after the journey. Shall I introduce them? My daughter, I will consent to anything that will rid me from the abominable tyranny of these two men. What hole without there? Summon my court without an 